was in Paktika. Um, and he, uh, uh, I'm going to have to make a change real quick. Sean Van Diver, a Navy vet, is with the San Diego chapter of the Truman National Security Project. He's a busy man. He had to stop answering my questions to check on Afghans trying to make their way to the U.S. Nothing like this has ever happened before. This is the most uniquely American thing I've ever seen. Like people that don't do this, just pulling themselves up and getting out. And I'm working from 4 a.m. to midnight every day um, for people that we've never met. Supporters call it a digital Dunkirk when hundreds of pleasure boats were pressed into service to rescue British troops trapped in France during World War II. Vet groups like No One Left Behind, which has worked for years to bring military translators back to the U.S., are working alongside hastily assembled vet coalitions like Van Divers. These groups are also discouraging American volunteers from making the chaos worse like chartering flights into Kabul without a clear plan to get people into the airport in time. It's heartbreaking work. For the human being, for the sake of God, I beg them to help me, to save my children. Desperate Afghans are reaching out, including one man who worked for an American contractor at Bagram Air Force Base in the 2000s. We're not using his name for security reasons. He's still trying to figure out the visa process. I have a lot of friends that they know me, that I work with them. I helped them, I help them on that time. Now it's my time. Afghan vets have contacts over there. They're getting these messages, these desperate pleas for help. Christopher Goldsmith is a vet advocate and Iraq war veteran. He lost touch with his unit's translator when ISIS took over. A week ago, he created Evacuate Our Allies. You know, that... The uncertainty for me is heavy, but the certainty of knowing that these desperate cries for help suddenly go silent, um, that's going to be unimaginably more tough for many more people. He says for veterans coming to the aid of their Afghan allies is probably the clearest objective of the 20-year war. The group is urging the White House to extend the deadline and cut through red tape so more people can be airlifted out of Kabul. Mohammed is a translator who came to San Diego less than two years ago. It took him more than three years to go through the special immigration visa program. He still has family trapped in Afghanistan. He's also getting calls from other translators still there. One person spent eight days in and around the airport before giving up and going back home. He asked me, uh, last night he talked to me, he asked me, he said, like, can you know someone in the airport to help me? I said, I can't, I know, I, I don't know someone else because right now everything has changed. Tal- uh, in the main gate, outside, everything is in by Taliban hand. How I help you? Since October, California has taken in roughly 1,600 SIV recipients, the most of any state. Some San Diegans are still on the ground in Afghanistan. Aside from a group of students from El Cajon Valley Union School District, Americans of Afghan descent are trying to find their way out of the country, including former translators who went home one last time. You know, I'm trying to tell folks, look, we built this website for resources, and, but there's only so much that a group of volunteers can do. We need government support, and we need to take care of these folks. And quickly, Van Diver says, before the last American flight leaves Afghanistan. Steve Walsh, KPBS News.